Hello girls, nice to be with you again. So thank you for the shoulder dystocia task. We'll quickly go through uh, your station the way you did it and uh, I'll try to point out as much as I can um, um, whatever I felt was uh, room for improvement and um, there was a lot of room for improvement. Now I do need to um, I do need to uh, emphasize that please, please, please do not feel demotivated if I point out something that you were not expecting. My purpose is only and only to, uh, you know, to uh, kind of improve uh, whatever we can in this time. You've got plenty of time in your hands. You just need to be to make sure that whatever preparation you are doing is going in the right direction. Uh, so for instance, if this task was done after, you know, like you have just landed into, you know, starting to practice these stations and this was your, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth task, then okay, that's fine you have time to to improve but if this was something like you've done 20 or more stations and you're still doing this then i will be really concerned i'll have uh, i i'll have a uh, lots of worry that uh, you are not preparing in the direction that um should that you should be doing okay it means that your energies are probably uh you know um probably uh, not being used in the right direction. If you are practicing somewhere, your problems are not being identified. And uh, it means that if, and I'm again, I repeat that if this was your station, and I'll run it just now, if this was your station, that was your initial few stations, then probably I would say this is a start and you, you know, get used to things um, slowly. But if this was after 10 or 20 stations and you're doing this thing, then you have to really, really stop doing what you're doing and kind of overhaul uh you know um, your way your approach really okay that will be a big concern for me a big concern for me okay a warning uh kind of um, uh, feeling okay so let's start with this station this was a shoulder dystocia task this was uh, from the oxford book it's um task one of uh, chapter 11 really and uh, this was a patient lots of information is given in the in you can all look into the oxford book i will not be displaying the station here um this is a patient who is uh, you know in her second pregnancy at 21 weeks there's a lot of information provided about her previous um, uh, pregnancy uh, previous delivery uh, it was complicated by shoulder dystocia um, with a um, despite that the baby's weight was 3.5 kilos not a lot and uh, uh, and you know uh, they said that the baby didn't have any injuries at all but the patient was quite you know apprehensive and all that and she has lots of concerns around that so this was the station it was a very traumatic experience for the patient and uh, um, I didn't see any mention of, uh, you know, um, other risk factors in the station. Uh, so, but I'll keep pausing as we go along. Let's start your audio here. Sorry, it's running on, <laughs> on the double speed. Let me correct the speed. Okay. Yes. How do you want to be called? Lucy is fine, doctor. Lucy, you have come with a 21 week scan in the second pregnancy. You come for a, to discuss the reports of the scan. Yes, doctor. Do you have any concern to discuss? Okay, I will stop right here right here and i have to be um as i said i will not try to be harsh but but then i'll have to be very very objective here if i'm not straightforward and if i'm not saying what i mean to say then it will not be an honest feedback this is the time when things can be improved okay so um the feedback is not intended to be a harsh feedback it can sometimes feel like that please don't feel that way my only purpose is to uh, motivate you to you know correct the direction of your preparation so uh, in this i i will 
I rewind it a little bit, what you said, you will hear that again, because there's a big problem here, a big problem, okay? So as I said, the information was provided to you. There was a lots of information that was given, okay? Um, and uh, your start, you, the, you know, the task that you were given about the station, uh, it uh, really um, read like this, that uh, the patient is very apprehensive about um, you know, having another shoulder dystocia, um, as it was very traumatic experience for her, and she seeks, she's, you know, here to seek reassurance, and um, she's quite disappointed that uh, this was not pre uh, predicted last time, and uh, she was not given any uh, proper explanation as well, okay? And they, they have also said that you have gone through the notes, you have lots of information that's given there, okay? So I'll run yours again. Today, this doctor, previously I had a, a shoulder got stuck, stuck um, in this, to discuss the reports of this. Sorry, 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 I'm trying to. Lucy, uh, you have come with a 21 week scan in the second pregnancy. You come for a, to discuss the reports of the scan. Yes, doctor, do you have any concern to discuss? So here you are saying that uh, you, despite that you were given a lot, of, uh, a lot of information, you are saying that only this thing that you are here with your twenty-one week scan and you are here to discuss your report. Do you have any other concerns? Uh, here I'll stop you. So I want you to apply what I'm trying to say to you now, I want you to apply to all the stations that you, uh, you know, uh, encounter in your exam, okay? It's not only about this station, okay? This, this station says a lot um, that you have totally ignored, okay? You, you, they've given you lots of information and you've totally ignored that. You said that you had, a, uh, you are at 21 weeks, you have a scan and you're here to discuss the report. No, that's not just the case. She is here because of all that trouble that she had gone through in, you know, in her previous delivery. And now she is at 21 weeks and she has a scan, but the station clearly says she's apprehensive. She was traumatized about the previous experience. She was disappointed by this person. So this is a patient who is really in kind of a mental agony, really, like what happened to me. And you don't seem to be relating to her. You're just, you know, ignoring all the information that's given in the station and you're taking it very easy that, you know, you are 21 weeks, do you have any concerns? So you are kind of asking her, do you have any concerns? Well, there is a big story written there and you totally are, um, you know, ignoring that, okay? So please don't do that, don't do that because that will sound like you are not attentive, you are not empathetic, you have, you know, you're just taking it so casually, you don't even read the station that what's being asked. So um, there will be unfortunately a lot of issues with this station if you went like this, okay? So no, she's not here just with a scan and she's not here and you're not asking her concerns without first telling her, you know, uh, what you already know. So you will sum it up nicely in just few words. You can probably, let me try to uh, phrase it for you. You can probably say it to her that uh, I understand that uh, you are at 21 weeks of uh, pregnancy, uh, of your second pregnancy, and you had a scan today. And, and, and this and is important. And uh, seems like you had a terrible experience in the last delivery. Is that right? So you don't have to say all the story of shoulder dystocia and all that, but you have to acknowledge that you know that you had problems. If you, you know, if you're not get, making this connection with her right in the start, then, you know, it can end up with a very poor communication, no relationship building, uh, no partnership building. Uh, she won't trust you. Uh, she think that you are not focusing. You don't, you're not, you know, attentive to her problems and you're not, you, uh, you know, uh, pe people don't like to uh, reiterate their stories. So if, the story is there. She would, if she, as a, even as a role player, she would know that you've been informed about these things. So she'll feel strange that 
the, the, you've been given a lot of information and you are just simply saying that uh, you are a 21 weeks of gestation. You have uh, a scan today and you're here to discuss it. And do you have any concerns? That's like, you know, ignoring everything uh, that's provided to you. So it's such a big thing that it can ca cause you a fail in a communication uh, with the patient. Okay, so uh, despite that you talk sweetly and politely and whatnot, but this is, um, you know, this is a big thing. Okay, so let's go for, so I'm, I'm insisting on this point and I'm asserting on this point a lot because this is a, a generic skill for you. This is not only specific to this station, okay? This is not specific to shoulder dystocia. This is something that will help you if you try to assimilate what I'm trying to say to you. If you try to understand this point, you can apply it to all the stations. This is a generic skill, okay? All the stations, because I want you to enter a station really ready. So the first two minutes that I... I requested you guys, I made a video on how to utilize your first two minutes. I requested you guys to start com to compose yourself well in those, uh, you know, two minutes. You have to think of all the bubbles that can come in that, you know, uh, in that station or all the possible bubbles. Okay, so you will have to uh, be ready that, okay, what, what's the situation? I have to be aware of the situation. If you're not aware of the situation, then you will be, you have lost the plot really right in the start. And that's not a good start. Okay. So that if you develop this generic skill that you are going to be ready, you will not forget what's provided. And again, I'll uh, request you to watch that other video as well, which um, which is on the Osler um, examination format, uh, online examination. Okay. Um, why I say that? Because I told you in that that you can bring the station right in front of you throughout your, um, you know, ten minutes. Okay. So you, 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 that can be in front of you, and you can verify. You know, you can kind of constantly give, um, have it in front of your eyes so that you are not missing things okay you can uh, have a glance there and you, you try not to forget that they have given all that information to you okay if you 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 kind of you there's a chance of 50 percent winning right at this spot right in the start okay so this is my message my biggest message in today's video is this your start okay your start is it has to show that you know uh, the station okay today this doctor previously i had a, a shoulder got stuck stuck in my previous previous delivery doctor my friend that also i want to discuss um, yeah before discussing about the so again here she says shoulders got discussed uh, got, got stuck now i've stopped your audio there because uh, you 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 said to her yeah and you said that I will want to ask you questions. I'll rewind that again, and you have to hear that again, please. So let me try to rewind it. Stuck in my previous previous delivery, doctor. My friend, that also I want to discuss. Um, yeah, before discussing about uh, this, your concern and this management options, can I ask you a few questions to know? So what did you do here? So this is my message for all of you, all of you, what have you done here? So she's saying, the patient is saying that the shoulders got stuck. You just said, yeah. So that's not an acceptable communication. She says the baby's shoulder got stuck. The letter says she had a traumatic experience. Um, she's very, very apprehensive. And you just said, yeah. What is it that you could have said? Immediately acknowledge say that I understand that I'm so sorry to hear that okay and I even as I said I even don't want you to depend on the patient saying that you should actually acknowledge that before you know you should be the one saying to the patient that I understand that you had such a terrible experience but okay we already talked about it that you didn't realize but okay now the patient is saying to you and you are saying yes yeah. You're saying, yeah, can, shall I ask you some questions? This is not a good communication, okay? You can't do that. You will say that, oh, uh, I'm so sorry to hear that. 
and then you know make you build up your connection then you can ask you know ask her questions and all that so please be careful that don't say yeah on big things okay yeah is a is a very casual response okay it's a very um non acknowledging um unempathetic okay so let's go ahead more about you is doctor yeah i lucy please tell me about your pregnancy doctor this is my second pregnancy now i am 21 weeks so far i have no complications the dating scan down screening and the booking blood test and the, everything is normal doctor so yeah, yeah this is i like that we facilitate ourselves when we are you know acting as our own patients as well so what a lovely patient you became for yourself that's fine you told everything yourself that booking scan was fine and all patients probably maybe some patient is that good but uh, like you know with all that technical information um but uh, anyway um um i just enjoyed it that you facilitated yourself quite a lot by saying all that and i have a, i have two year old in the house she was by vagina why i stopped there was that i wanted to highlight that um you, you don't expect that from the patients usually okay don't um, don't feel that the patient will put it put everything in the plate for you okay they will but uh, they'll want you to come up with the proper questions for that no delivery and had the difficulty the experience of the shoulder got stuck when she was delivered and by some methods she was delivered some maneuvers they did she was delivered and uh, within 3 minutes doctor and she was very good move the committee can't this be pretty i am doubling the speed now just to save some time okay the doctor this was not predicted by the doctors nobody informed me beforehand you see the shoulder dystrophy cannot be predicted why it happens so even when you're saying she cannot be predicted you can again say that uh, i'm sorry i understand that you are so stressed about that and then you can say unfortunately it can't be predicted okay it's doctor this can happen because it is more common in women with uh, increased weight height ratio and women with prolonged labor and women with increased weight of the baby and women with you know fixed out of labor or with a diabetes and women with history of previous history of getting stuck so in this i don't think quick start is a is a term really we don't use it quick start okay so i don't know why who invented this term quick start of labor delivery the risk for you is 10 times more compared to the other women am i clear so far this doctor your care is now in consult with you only you are carefully following your mm-hmm. the induction of labor does not mean quick start of labor okay you, you if you're wanting to say induction of labor we don't use the word quick start for that okay induction of labor means that you know you will use the word like you know uh we will um probably um you know use some medication to start off the labor earlier okay rather than quick start okay uh quick start is the word that we use with the contraception doctor what are the risks to the baby uh, if the shoulder dystrophy i mean shoulder that gets stuck doctor the risk of injury to the nerves to the upper arm and a rarely fracture of the collarbone or fracture of the upper arm bone can occur and the oxygen supply to the baby's brain may go can go down the baby should be delivered within 3 minutes otherwise the baby can go for a low oxygen supply and so the brain may suffer and it plays suffer this doctor can anything be done to prevent this doctor this cannot be predicted as i told you but in your condition the risk is more and women with them estimated birth weight birth weight of the baby equal to or more than 5 kg they can be offered cesarean section to prevent this occurring or women with diabetes with the estimated birth weight of the baby equal to or more than 4.5 kg yeah 4 kg diabetes 4.5 like 5 kg and uh, women with diabetes 4.5 kg this is not the information that you give to the patient i'm i'm afraid okay this is information overload for the patient why does she need to know those criteria like one or two just say if the baby is big this will happen if the baby is too big and don't use that kind of you know soft language for the patient um if she is keen to know about so much technical information she'll probably probe you but you know you are tra- you've started t- telling her the criteria you are you started talking like you are teaching um, a junior colleague or maybe you are in an sd with a consultant so this is not really uh, an spd discussion that you're doing here so for the same section to prevent this doctor can quick start of labor can prevent this mm. quick start of labor can be done in women with the diabetes or uh, diabetes or diabetes uh, developing pregnancy that is called gestational diabetes but is not useful as per the 
protocols that is not advisable. How, um, how will we manage the operating doctors again? And immediately, we'll be doing it in a methodical way according to the protocol. We'll be calling for help. And already, as we are anticipating the problem, more during this maternity assistance. You no, know, this is not the information that you give to the patient, please. She's saying, how will you prevent it? And you started talking about call for help and all that stuff. Okay, let me run it for another couple of minutes. Be there and consult them, the baby doctor, the pain doctor, everybody will be around and the group and say blood will be done and the woman will be having a viper uh, thing. I mean, you will be there in the... No, 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 I'm sorry. Okay, again, this is not what she was asking you, okay? Even though you were yourself, your patient, but this is not what she wants to know, okay? You will call for help. Call for help is not the thing that we tell to the patient, okay? Call for help is for our internal use kind of you know terminology. It's like for if we are talking to the midwives, if we are talking to the labor board coordinator, to our junior colleague or to the consultant, then yes, we'll talk about that. Uh, we, not, we don't say these things to the patient. So uh, this is not what she was asking. What she was asking was, how would you prevent? You will tell her about multidisciplinary team care. You will tell her about consultant-led care. You will tell her about delivery in the hospital uh, in a safe environment where people are trained to look after, um, look after uh, complicated deliveries. Uh, you will tell her about uh, antenatal care. We will be scanning for any, you know, in, uh, grow, fetal growth to see if there is, you know, just to rule out any macro, so, uh, despite that, the, if there is a risk of, if we say that as we will keep monitoring you in the pregnancy, if there is a suspicion of, you know, baby growing too big, we will, um, um, you know, assess you for the need of any scanning um, or, you know, and things like that, you know, and to, uh, depending on our, um, uh, depending on her existing risk factors. So when she says, how will you prevent you? Don't really jump to, to for, you know, start explaining to her. You first say, we'll assess your risks like, uh, may I know your BMI, okay? Uh, may I know any, you know, say uh, personal history of diabetes or, uh, or and all that risk factors you will start excluding first okay after excluding the risk factors you will say this is our plan to prevent this you are because of so you will see whether there are any additional risk factors present or not okay in addition to her previous history of shoulder dystocia which makes her tenfold uh, at tenfold higher risk of shoulder dystocia now but that may not be her only risk. She may have a high BMI, okay? So we will ask her that, okay, to answer this question, can I ask a couple of questions? And you will then quickly ask what risk factors are there. And then you will say, okay, given this situation, these are the risk factors that I have identified. Previous history of uh, having the baby stuck um, puts you at a tenfold higher risk. But please don't worry. I don't mean to uh, make you apprehensive on that. Um, we we are, are capable of uh, providing you the best care through our team. We will offer you consultant-led care. You will be looked after uh, by a multidisciplinary team uh, through a multidisciplinary team approach. You know, and you can include all the that uh, sonographers and the midwives and the fetal medicine if required at any stage and you know anesthetists if required at any stage and you will involve them all and if she's diabetic or at risk of gestational diabetes diabetes then you can uh, just keep increasing whatever the MDT would look like but even if you said you know team of doctors um and midwives will look after you consultant led care hospital delivery will uh, you know, um, baby doctors will be uh, uh, involved in your care as well. So you are saying to her that we have got all the environment and all the experts to look after you. This is our prevention, okay? You don't tell her that we call for help, we'll do this, we'll do this. You say, this is our uh, this is our prevention strategy that so we'll keep monitoring, we'll keep assessing the risk, and we will evaluate you for suitability uh, for, you know, vaginal delivery. If she's only at 21 weeks, you have to highlight that at some point we will see, you know, like 20, around 28 weeks, we discuss the mode of delivery. Uh, and then if um, we do a 
it, we don't stop at 28 weeks, okay? So we discuss at 28 weeks and then again, we keep an, uh, in the next appointments, we keep an eye on her baby's growth and keep um, uh, an eye on her risk factors, okay? And um, if it is deemed uh, advisable by the you know, team looking after her that uh, she should undergo, say, cesarean section, maybe she has this macrosomia, maybe whatever happens. So if it's advisable to go, uh, you know, go ahead with a cesarean section, you will be advised that. And if um, vaginal delivery is still a safe option, you will be given information on that. So you will, these are the things that she wants to know. She doesn't want to know that you will call for help and you use a wide bore cannula, okay? So this station has gone absolutely in a very uh, strange direction. Um, this is I absolutely seems like you when you know, you kind of, you, you absolutely didn't um, utilize the, uh, you know, that two minute, time in thinking what are you going to talk to the patient what is it that she, what are the things that are important for the patient okay so i'll run your audio how to give fluid if repaired and uh, if it happens the shoulder is in the shoulder getting stuck is, is a diagnosed with the previous head comes and it shows as if it's a total head the shoulder is not coming down in that condition we'll be explaining the patient how to push and after getting her consent the special maneuvers will be done that is bending the she'll be brought to the edge of the table and she is, if she's underage. Again, as I already said that, no, you don't need to tell this thing. If you wanted to say that, yes, in during your um, delivery, um, there will be, we'll keep a close eye on the progress of labor. Um, you know, at any point, if we thought that the labor is not progressing, uh, um, you know, swift enough or uh, smooth enough, uh, there will be a, um, um, the, the consultant input will be throughout there and there may be a lower threshold for taking you to theater if uh, given your previous history, okay? So you will talk in that kind of, um, she, this is what she wants to know. You have to see what's important from the patient's perspective, okay? She doesn't want to know that you will do this maneuver or that maneuver. She just wants to know how safe she is, okay? So you are talking about things that after shoulder dystocia happens, what you know you will be doing. But she is asking about, you know, whether she will have to go through the torture of what she went, you know, before uh, again. So you you have to show your expertise and you have to show your insight that we have system in place where we will not we'll try our maximum best to. Uh, avoid that first, okay, to minimize the risk, because now we know that she is a tenfold high risk. Uh, we have certain uh, recommendations, isn't it, as per shoulder dystocia green top guideline, you know, so we'll just uh, reassure her on the basis of that, and on the basis of that there will be a, uh, the consult consultant involvement and the senior obstetrician involvement will be there throughout, uh, just to make sure that, you um, uh, we are, uh, you know, that that situation can be as much, it's not always a preventable uh, situation, but we'll make sure that we do our best, okay? Sorry, there is an injection on the back, that is good, uh, and LGCR, pain relief, will be as, uh, bending her thighs over the abdomen and separating yeah, them. bending her thighs is not required. Um, this was not a discussion about analgesia as well, so that's, uh, you know, it won't cause you any penalty, but this is not what she was asking. If not possible, pressure over the baby shoulder uh, from above will be done by another assistant. Again, my interaction will be done. If not successful, um, then other manipulations can be done at giving the uh, cut in the vagina. Then internal manipulations will be done to let the baby out, deliver the baby out within each year. Whenever we'll be taking about 30 seconds, so that within three minutes, the baby should be delivered. If not possible, the baby, if the woman is thin and it's not on injection on the back, she'll be asked to adopt the four, all four positions, then again, all the methods will be repeated. Even then, it is a failure, again, the head will be pushed into the so anyone who is, I'm sorry, I'm running this on the double speed, but anyone who is not able to listen to the audio properly, I encourage you guys, if you've not, you're not in the Telegram group, I encourage you guys, you can 
you're most welcome to join our telegram group the link is in the description uh, you can you will find this audio and you will you will be able to hear it as many times as you like okay that will be a good learning point um here i'm trying to uh, because i have to come um, you know finish this station and then discuss what would um you know the points from what i have made for you some bubbles for you so please anyone who wants to listen to this in you know at a good pace at a at a slow pace please uh, welcome to uh, listen it from the telegram group today i should be shifted to the operation theater and the cesarean section will be done thank you so much this doctor after this delivery what are the complications to the mother doctor the mother can have a increased bleeding so we will be giving a preventive treatment to the cesarean section to prevent bleeding and we'll be looking for the uh, injury to the tear and the perineum and it will be Uh, properly stitched under good light and the good the pain relief and she will be treated with antibiotics and painkillers and the laxatives and the uh, thin tube in the uh, water bag to uh, let out the urine for about 12 hours it will be continued and she will be given the blood thinners am i clear so far so doctor what are the risks to the baby and you are saying she she to her okay so you don't you say you if you're talking about but anyway this information is not for her so the baby can have in 2 to 16 percent can develop due to the nerves uh, supplying the upper part of the body i mean um so in nine out of 10 babies they recover this we call as break apex injury this injury to the nerves to the upper arm one in 10 may have residual effect and it also for this doctor so we have two options as uh, your baby is okay and there is no injury to the nerves uh, you can have a vaginal delivery or plan cesarean section you have to decide accordingly hmm and clear uh, what are the decision you may be here to support you and second degree is usually easier than the first i give you the patient information leaflet and i document everything and uh, i will make in, a, in arrange my appointment with the consultant so that you can come and have a discussion do you have any uh, question lucy no doctor thank you lucy for your time okay girls so um let's now see that uh, what would be what would this station actually um sorry i got distracted okay so let's see what would you what do i think how could you address this station so uh first of all we know that this is the patient 21 weeks of gestation previous history of shoulder dystocia we are i'm not going to repeat that um i would want you to remember what i've said here that this is not an sd you have to be careful with the information you are providing this is the biggest issue with this station okay so you've been given a lots of information regarding the previous delivery you cannot ignore that information and still impress the examiner or the patient okay so please do not say things to the patient that you are meaning for the examiner okay criteria for you know that 5 kg and 4.5 kg and um group and save and um you know maneuvers and uh, call for help and all that stuff that is for the examiner and you when it's an spt you don't uh, you don't cheat you don't talk to the examiner through the patient don't do that okay uh, here what you will do um you will first see what are the tasks given in this station don't say just with a you know you are at 21 weeks um, here for discussing the um you know um, scan she was not there just to discuss the scan so first of all you confirm and check first of all you uh, confirm the tasks that were given in the station okay you acknowledge them you check with her that this is what i can get from here is this right and then you ask if would there be anything else as well that you want me to address okay so it's a matter of uh, not uh, Sorry. so it's a matter of not really um uh, skipping all the information that was that was there okay now you have to remember what were the tasks given the tasks were that she was apprehensive she was traumatized she wanted to know why did it happen and why it was not prevented so you focus on that you will apologize for that if somebody then did not explain it to you where was the delivery and if you know 
it was not explained to her, you will, you know, in an empathetic way, you will say this is not something that you will do a duty of candor and you will do an incident report. This is not something like that. You just say that I'm sorry if it happened like that. And if, you know, it was not explained, uh, I can definitely try to answer all your questions. I can try to alleviate your anxiety and apprehension. We are here to help you. We are here to support you. Okay. So, and then you can. Um, explain to her why it happened. So the answer to the question of why it happened comes before anything else, okay? So you explain her why, what are the, what are usually, uh, it can happen without any known risks, but uh, these are the known risks as well. The uh, risk is higher if the, these risks are present, you will tell her. And then you will say that, uh, um, uh, you know, why it was uh, not prevented because it's not always preventable okay and um, then you will explore her risk factors now you will say that now we can look after you now and as i said you will talk to her about the offer we'll offer you consultant led care and multidisciplinary uh, team care uh, you will offer you delivery in the hospital so we can you know there all the expertise are available to um, to look after you and to look after um, the baby there will be baby doctors as well on you know in attending the delivery. So that would be a um, good um, care package for you, okay? Now you'll say to her that, um, uh, yes, uh, we, we, we'll see what risk factors are provided in the station. And if they're not provided, then we'll explore, okay? Like BMI and anything else you wanted to know, okay? And then you will also tell her that how will we, she can, the, this problem can be an evolving problem. Last time that baby's birth weight was 3.5 kilos. So we're not, there are, this is a double-edged kind of, I won't say double-edged sword. What I'm trying to say is that we can't say that, oh, it's good that your baby's weight was 3.5 because if she had shoulder dystocia with even 3.5, then we're not saying we are reassured with a low weight, okay? We are saying that you had a shoulder dystocia with even a lower uh, birth weight of the baby, which means that we will um, anyway be vigilant um, about any um, high risk in your case, okay? If it was high, too high, um, we'll again um, talk about, you know, we can say that, okay, I, that was high, this baby will see how it goes, how big the baby gets, and we may want to, uh, you know, um, there, there could be a question of induction can come at some point. We're not going to decide her uh, decide right now to say to her that, no, 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 we don't induce. There is no point in induction. Don't say anything like that. She's not there to, you know, um, to, to uh, get your verdict, okay? She's here so that you can say to her that if the baby gets too big, and she doesn't need to know how much too big, just if the baby is too big, there is always an option of inducing the labor because you're not giving her any criteria, okay? She's not there to get educated about the criteria, but you are reassuring her that if the situation seems to be getting out of the hand, we are here to handle. This is what we're trying to give her the message, okay? So you will tell her that thing, okay? So, um, now address we are addressing this question of hers that can this happen again okay so and uh, then I, we already said we'll explore the risks and mdt and we'll tell her about the monitoring and care and the monitoring and care will mean that we'll say that uh, she'll be uh, cared for by the midwives as well as the antenatal team and um, the obstetric team and uh, she'll have she, she may need some scans, growth scans to keep an eye on the baby's, uh, you know, growth. And uh, then you will assure her with all, okay, uh, with all your uh, uh, planning, okay. And then <clears throat> remember always that uh, she, she may have some more questions if she has and you answer them the um the book, uh, sorry, my throat. <clears throat> sorry about my throat, my, um, okay. So, <clears throat> so these were the questions that they had given in the book that uh, she may ask you that, you know, 
uh, what is shoulder dystrophia, why it happened. We have already talked about, about this. And uh, she may ask you that, uh, what's the likelihood and can the risk be reduced? And I already talked to you about how the risk can be reduced, okay? Uh, not by the things that you were telling, but by all that care package that we are providing, okay? Uh, yes, she will probably ask you the risk to the baby. When she asks risk to the baby, it's always good to tell her a risk to her as well, okay? So the risk of, you mentioned about uh, giving her some injection for control of PPH, but uh, that was not what uh, actually we wanted to say. We would talk about the risks first, okay? that we, we won't be telling her the management steps. We will say these are the risks and we will be able to manage. And then if she asks how, then you can answer. Otherwise, you will just say, <clears throat> these are the risks to the baby and these are the risks to the mother and uh, we will take steps to reduce the risk. Yeah, but if you if you are finished with everything else and you have time, then you can say that we can give you injection for reduction of the uh, to, to reduce the risk of bleeding in yourself and what can you do for the baby, you can tell her, okay? Um, that does not mean that you start explaining the maneuvers to her. She, maneuvers are not for her, okay? Uh, not for her to know, okay? So uh, delivery options are for her, you know, that we, we, are, we are going in with an open mind. It depends on how it goes throughout your pregnancy whether you require a vagina, you know, whether vagina delivery is still a safe option or will you require a, um, a section or will you require uh, induction of labor at any stage, okay? Uh, that's it really. If there's any other question, you can let me know. Uh, it's 1 a.m. on my side and I am really, really sleepy now. Uh, thank you and bye-bye. Do drop me whatever your question is. You can uh, send me in the telegram and I can try to respond to that, okay? I am very, very busy these days. Uh, so, but I'll try to come back to you guys, okay? Uh, but you please, please, uh, if you are doing this practice and people are not highlighting these um, issues, then you probably need to uh, look at the way you are practicing again. It's your very important exam. Uh, don't risk it with people who are not able to, don't risk it with the mediocres, please, okay? There are very good people um, you know, on Telegram um, is, um, you know, who, can, who can get you ready for your exam. Uh, don't prepare your exam with the mediocres. It's not good, it's not fair. Um, uh, it's not fair for, for any, uh, but you like that to kind of who is not able to point out your mistakes properly to um, influence your exam preparation. So I'll say there are lots of people who are doing a very good job. Just find the find somebody who uh, you know who can really really help you with that. Like in their courses, of course that uh, it's I, I know the life is so busy for all of us. It's not possible all the time to give this kind of input. Okay, this can be done after some weeks, but uh, you know once in a few weeks time. But uh, you guys should probably go for a better kind of um, support for yourself. Okay, like a re more regular kind of support. Okay, so uh, good luck with your exam preparation. And bye-bye.